What's going on everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here and welcome to another review of the Boruto anime. Today we're going to be covering episode 183, which involves the return of Sumire, our queen in the Boruto series. <laughs> Anyways, how was the episode? Well, before we get on to the review, I just want to say, if you like this type of content and you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Anyways, let's get on to that review, shall we? Now, just like with last week's episode review, um, this is another um, adaptation of a manga chapter, and it adapts it pretty well for the most part while making changes where it's necessary. So I want to focus more so on the um, anime original scenes more so than the manga stuff, but I will mention them in passing. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up as I do this review. And interesting enough, the episode actually starts out with an anime original scene between uh, Delta and Code in the Kara hideout. And I thought this was an interesting conversation. It shows that the Kara members don't exactly get along because they're um, kind of bickering amongst one another. Code's over here wishing he was the one that would actually have been sent on the mission to retrieve the vessel. Delta herself feels confident in retrieving the vessel as well and he actually uh, tries to take on Code and Code doesn't feel like it. <laughs> And um, she starts um, talking crap behind Amino's back, which he he ends up hearing because he's approaching. And he informs the two that, yeah, because of the life that Victor lived, he's uh, definitely untrustworthy. So uh, he's dead now, which surprises the two. Now, Borto and the others have made it to the research lab. And now this introduction scene here is uh, slightly different than what it was in the manga. Because in the manga, they end up entering the building and Sumir ends up running into Borto and the others. Whereas here, um, we actually run into Akita first, which is pretty nice, and she has Nu, and Nu's kind of running around and looks like he's out of control. But it turns out that uh, Sumir over here is actually using a VR set to try and control Nu's motions, and yeah, this uh, means a little slightly different than what it was, uh, how it was portrayed in the manga, so I thought that was kind of nice. Now, also differences here is um, between the anime and manga is how Sumir joined the Scientific Ninja Tools team. So in the manga, it's not really explained how she joined, but we know that in the manga she didn't take the tuning exams like she did in the anime, and she ended up joining the Scientific Ninja Tools team at some point. Whereas in the anime, it kind of explains why she joined the Scientific Ninja Tools team. It's kind of because of Boruto back in the Jugo arc. She made her decision back then. So, yeah. Now the next scenes are very similar between anime and manga, in which first off we have Boruto and Mitsuki vs. Sarada. It's very similar to how it happened in the manga, where Sarada ends up using a scientific ninja tool to stun both Boruto and Mitsuki. It shuts off their senses and allows Sarada to win the battle. We then have the scene where Boruto and Mitsuki are using those gloves and those, or their mittens or whatever they're called, and they're climbing on the walls and not expelling their chakra. So that's pretty neat. And you also have the scene where Boruto is on the kite. He's having a lot of fun at first until he crashes and injures himself. There was one scene from the manga that didn't get adapted in the anime where they're testing out like some sound device or whatever that shuts off their hearing or something like that so I'm yeah I'm kind of curious as to why the anime didn't show this off but whatever moving on so this next part is the part that I've been looking forward to the most going into this episode and it's the moment between Boruto and Sumir which is a very nice scene and yes the Bor Sumi ship intensifies here which I actually really like what the anime did here so the beginning part is very similar in which Sumir actually applies that spray to Boruto's cheek and it heals his injury. But what I like here is the anime goes the extra mile. So Sumir and, and Boruto's conversation is expanded a little bit, in which Sumir actually tells Boruto that she admires him because he's not following in the same footsteps as his father. Boruto over here has been bad-mouthing the Scientific Ninja Tools the entire episode in the previous episode as well. So he's, he's shown clearly that he's not fond of Scientific Ninja Tools. However, one thing I thought was interesting here is that Boruto actually apologizes to Sumir because she's part of the Scientific Ninja Tools team, which I think is uh, pretty interesting that Boruto would do this. Like, he's not really showing respect for the Scientific Ninja Tools to anyone else, but when it comes to Sumir, who's part of the team, he's actually apologizing for his behavior. So I thought that was interesting. But um, Sumir, you know, she's like, no, don't worry about it. I understand why you don't like them. She knows that he cheated in the tuning exam, so she understands why he would hate um, Scientific Ninja Tools. And she actually mentions here that, yeah, people, you know, are uneasy about things they don't understand, but when it comes to me and my power with Nu, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out how to control ourselves. And, you know, you and Miss Akita are the ones that actually accepted us for who we are. So, yeah, I thought that was actually a really nice scene, and I like the fact that the anime did this. They did take away the part where Boruto asked um, Sumir if uh, she trusts Katasuke, but I'm fine with it, because I thought this scene was really well done in the anime. 
I also want to mention really quickly here is that Sumir actually mentions that she's actually being transferred over to the main headquarters for the Scientific and Engineering Tools team, so she'll be assisting Dr. Katasuke going forward, which actually ties into certain events in the manga. So I like the fact, again, that the anime is tying in the missing details from the manga. So, again, I gotta give kudos and praise to the anime for doing this. We then have the scene with uh, Chamaro showing up. Yes, Chamaro, the dog with the missing hind leg. Poor doggo. But anyways, this scene is pretty much the same as from anime to manga, so I'm not going to really talk about it here, but I just want to mention the doggo here because, um, yes, this is, a, this is a good boy, and he deserves all the love and praise for um, what he went through in his mission and losing his hind leg. So I just want to mention that. Now the scene where Boruto gets the chakra blade is actually altered in the anime version, because in the manga version he's still on the couch with Sumir, and I don't think Sarada and Mitsuki are present. But Boruto standing up and Sarada and Mitsuki are here, he gets the chakra blade, and he ends up uh, realizing that, uh, yeah, it drains your chakra pretty fast, so at the moment you can only use it, you know, in spurts. But, it, you know, it's going to definitely come in handy sometime in the future, in the near future I should say. But um, one thing you see here is that Borto he's slowly appreciating the scientific ninja tools, and he's realizing that you know, hey, it just depends on how you use it, and not you know, not being used like he did in tuning exams where he's using it to cheat. So uh, Borto says here again, he says this in the manga version, but he says here, you know, hey, Doctor Katasuke, that uh, prosthetic arm is a precious uh, hand that protects the village, right? Well, could you make me something even cooler than this in the future? It shows that, um, yeah, he's actually coming around and actually starting to respect Dr. Katasuke again, which uh, Dr. Katasuke actually ends up appreciating this. But Boruto ends up getting a call from his father, and more on that in a second. So we get another anime original scene with uh, Code and Delta here, and Amino is performing maintenance on them. And one thing that's interesting here is uh, Code over here is the one that wishes he could have killed Victor instead of Kashi and Koji. And uh, also, Code learns that uh, the vessels in Phase 3 and comes to the conclusion that, you know, Victor's words, or his last words about how something was sabotaged, that, hey, maybe one of the inners is actually plotting to take the vessel for themselves, not the vessels in Phase 3. And the one thing that's interesting here is, um, I wonder if it's either Co they come to the conclusion it's either Koji or Boro, and Delta's over here like, yeah, Boro probably is dead just like Victor, and then Boro just transports out of nowhere, he's like, haha, do you think anybody could kill me? Well, um, you, you might not want to say that, Boro. Um, I'm not going to spoil, but, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say something like that if I were you. <laughs> but anyways, um, he brags over here, he's just laughing, he's like, yeah, whatever, I should have been the one that was sent to retrieve the vessel, and he disappears off, so, yeah. <laughs> We shift back over to Boruto, and it basically follows how it went in the manga, where Naruto gives Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki their new mission to abort their current mission and take on the new mission of assisting Konohamaru and Mujino because communications were shut off and something's going on. And Naruto over here is actually worried that Kara is involved because, uh, yeah, that blimp went undetected on Konohamaru's radar, so something's up. The episode ends with yet another anime original scene with Amado and Jigen, in which Amado tells Jigen, yes, I'm going to find who the traitor is, and Code's uh, hiding behind the corner, seemingly plotting something, and as we see in the preview, it seemingly tries to attack Jigen. I wonder what that's about. I guess we'll find out with the next episode. So once again, the anime has done a great job adapting a manga chapter, in this case, chapter 18. And so far this arc, they've been doing a fantastic job adapting this arc, filling in the missing details and fleshing out the story by adding anime original scenes that make things, you know, a lot more entertaining and it fills in a lot of gaps in the story. But I have to say, my favorite thing about this episode, besides the Boruto and Sumier interaction moments, was definitely the car members, um interacting and bantering with one another because I think that's becoming like my favorite thing so far with the anime original scenes in this arc. It is fleshing out Kara so well and it's doing a far better job than the manga did. Like in the manga they were definitely kept you know in the dark because they were a mysterious organization at the time which is not a bad thing but at the same time you don't really get to know who these characters are like and what their personalities are like. So when they show up in the manga it's like okay why do I care for this character? Well, what the anime is doing here is it's showing off these characters, it's showing off how they're like, and how they interact with other people, and it's doing it in a way that I'm actually really liking, especially Code. We get to see more of Code's personality, you know, fleshed out in this episode, along with Boro, who shows up for a brief moment. And just that brief moment, you know, I actually really enjoyed his character, 
and I'm hoping that we get to see further interaction in the future because, yeah, I'm not... When Boro shows up in the manga, I'm not really the biggest fan of this dude, so I like the fact that the anime added this scene here because it, you know, it gives this character some justice. Alrighty, guys, that's really all I got for this episode review. So again, another good adaptation of a manga chapter. And also, we had some good interactions in this chapter between Boruto and Sumier, you know, the inner members of Kara. All the stuff that was added in here was all really nice, so I'm going to give this episode a 9 out of 10. So guys, in the comment section down below, let me know what you thought of this episode. What did you think about Boruto and Sumier's um, interactions in this episode? What do you think about the Kara members interacting in this episode? Post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'll see you all later. You have a great day or night wherever you're at. And peace.